Right, so today I'm gonna to talk about FTP testing, ramp testing, and why it's gained so much popularity, what FTP, FTP testing I do and I recommend for other people if you are gonna do one. So anyway, basically what it's saying here is that the FTP, so they had a little thing, how to execute the 28 minute test. Nate asked if anyone that has that has that ever tested recently and obviously everyone said no because testing is very stressful. So be, these are basically the main reasons for the ramp test. You can see pacing, um, you don't have to retest, you don't have to switch training. I mean, that's irrelevant for most people. I mean, it's not that hard to do and there's less overall stress on the body. Um, I think the main reason is the, the, this one, less overall stress on the body and pacing because I think for a lot of people, the 20 minute test, I mean, it's brutal. Like 20 minutes full gas up a climb is, is horrible. Like it, it is, um, and it's quite a long time and, and it's just hard to get right. It's hard to do a 20 minute effort unless you're relatively experienced. Even myself, like I thought, like, I mean, I've been training with power for a couple of years, done a fair few FTP tests, but I still feel like it's quite on the edge if I'm gonna get everything out on a 20 minute effort. Um, so it just takes a lot longer. But it is, anyway, what they do is they have a ramp test and it's just, progresses up and they take about 25% reduction with the highest one minute power. So if you have, um, if we go on Strava for instance, um, all you need to do is basically just go and look at the max one minute power. Now myself, I don't do ramp tests uh, because I don't have a smart trainer. So it's hard for me to find a smart trainer which I can do it on, um, which is a bit annoying um, just because you can't really do it like on your turbo trainer because like we're not a smart trainer because you have to ride within like, obviously you're doing 20 watt in increments, but you have to ride like very specifically to that power and it's quite hard to do. So it's better to do a ramp test with a erg mode on the trainer, sort of smart trainer sort of setup. Um, but anyway, so I think in that sense, it is a bit of a limiter because you can't, not, like, not everyone can do it. Um, you do need a smart trainer. But having said that, like let's be honest, um, most people probably can go to the gym, use a watt bike, something like that. I believe watt bikes do have it. For me, the main reason I do it is just because I don't ramp test. Um, that's a slight issue, but I just actually don't ride on the turbo trainer very much. I used to when I was at school and I had a lot less flexibility in when I could train, so I'd have to train after school. Um, and genuinely, I'd, I'd get home, do work, and then um, until about nine o'clock, and then at nine, I'd be like, right, time to hop on the turbo trainer, nine till 10 or nine till 10.30, get on the turbs. Um, so, now I don't because I'm at uni. I, I got a lot. I'm a lot more flexible in the hours I can train. Um, like I have a fair few hours in the week, but I can just sort of decide when I want to ride. Um, and genuinely, I prefer to ride outside. Obviously, so if I can, which is pretty much every day, I will ride outside. Um, and I just find that doing a test inside and outside is very different. Like, I c there's no way I could hold the same power I could, like inside as outside, especially if you don't have good heating or uh, good cooling systems. So for me, I just think it's better to test where you're going to ride and that leads me on to my next point which is about testing on the flat versus testing on a climb so if you were lived in an area if i lived in the alps obviously I'd test on a climb because i'm only going to do my efforts on a climb i'm going to race on a climb and that's it in the uk we don't really have very many climbs we have some but none really near me so instead um most of the races are pretty flat uh, maybe a little bit of punchy climbs sort of maximum five ten minutes ten minutes is a big climb like, there's a race with ten minutes like I want to do it because there aren't many around them They're hard to find race with like probably two to five minutes I said it's pretty stable and there are a fair few races where it's maybe a maximum of a minute climb uh, so anyway I uh, then therefore when you're going outside you need to think like how do I want to do it like ultimately to get my best numbers it's gonna happen on a climb like I can sometimes get my my power on the flat if I really train it to be close to the climb climbs always gonna be better for me uh, that's just seems to be where I am. It's nothing to do with weight or anything. Some really heavy riders will do, be able to do more power on the climb than the flat, and some light riders maybe will be able to do more power on the flats than the climbs, but most people find it easy to do power on the, on the climb just because you're putting power down through the pedal stroke for a longer duration and using more, not, not more muscles, but just different types of mu muscles. Because if you think about it, when you're riding at like 60 k's an hour on the flat, let's say, you, like, there's so much kinetic energy that you don't need to like push down on the pedals the whole time, you just give it a little bit of power just here or there, um, like just for not as long, but on a climb, obviously if you're going like 10 k's an hour or 20 k's an hour on a climb, then you're just not really, like there's a lot less kinetic energy, so you actually have to pedal the whole time because there's a lot less momentum. I did make a video of this, so I'll try and link that below. Um, but anyway, so that's basically the reason why people can do different power on the flat and the climb. So for me, 
I genuinely do most of my intervals if I can on a climb because I get a better workout. Obviously, I'll do some race specific ones. I'll do them on the flat. So let's say like if I'm going to do some intervals, maybe I'll do five eight minute efforts at FTP, let's say, and then I might do maybe three of them on a climb and two of them on a flat. Um, and then you know that you know that the the two on the flat aren't going to be as high numbers necessarily. Um, but if you do them beginning, then obviously you're fresher, and then hopefully um, you'll still have the energy to do them on the on the climb. So for me, I don't have a 20 minute mountain uh, anywhere near me, uh, unfortunately. I'd say the nearest one is probably like a good hour to two hours away. So yeah, um, I think for me, I'm just gonna use the two times eight minute test, which is annoying because everyone likes to ha like compare the gold standard 20 minute test, but I think reality, like I do wanna hit, like I've got certain goals I wanna hit for 20 minute powers probably next year, um, but I'll, I guess I'll just have to go somewhere with a, a fat climb or just learn how to put power on, um, on the flats better. So anyway, for the two times eight minute test, so basically you have eight minutes full gas, 10 minute rest, eight minutes full gas. There's a climb I know called Barrington Coombe, which I really like as a climb, not too steep, quite fast. Um, and yeah, you know, 6%, so you're going 20, 25 to 30 Ks an hour up there um, for most of it. So there's a little steep back here and there, but generally you're, you're going pretty fast. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm gonna do my uh, FTP test on them. Um, and I think the main thing with the FTP test is like, I talk a lot about all of this like specific specificity and how you want to have it like very similar to the intervals that you're going to do. So obviously if you're doing intervals on the climbs or racing on the climb, you want to do that. But at the same time, having said that, the most important thing is just having accurate FTP and uh, testing it regularly. Like if you're scared of doing a 20 minute test, even though it might be more accurate than like a ramp test, do the ramp test. And if you're going to do the ramp test every six weeks, that's so much better because it helps with the training because then you can quantify for getting better or worse. And I often find that, especially with myself, is that I get into this rut of just not wanting to test because it just hurts so much. And then I never change my training zones. I never know if it's working. And then you have no real progression in the year. Um, so I think that's really important, just like testing. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. Um, if you have any more questions about like FTP tests or anything, let me know. And also, I did put out a poll if you want to see any other videos. Um, just comment on that um, or go on and vote on the poll. I'm pretty sure it only works on the phone, first time used, not really sure what the whole thing's about. Um, but anyway, uh, I will be trying to make some more pro race stuff with that was the main thing. I got pro racing uh, and then why in a day, which apparently people want to watch somehow. Uh, but anyway, cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.